With the index function in Excel, we can enter a row and column number and get either a value or a reference. So we'll see a few examples. In this first one, we've got sales amounts for each month. And with the index function, we can specify where those sales amounts are and which row we would like returned. So here we have said month four, which is row four in our list, and it returns the sales amount for that month. To take that a little further, we could combine index with match. Match will look through the list of months, find the month that we've selected, and return that row number. Then the index function returns the sales amount from that row. In the next example, we've got a named range called months, month amounts, and that consists of the revenue and costs for each of three months. For the row, we've got a number in cell B10, the column is in C10, and we've got area in D10. So row is our region. So which region do we want? So if we put two, we'd get west, which is in row two. For the column, do we want revenue or cost? So here we've put a two for cost. And then the area is which of these three areas do we want? And that is equal to our month. So if I want month two, then I would get 387, which is the West February costs. In the next example, we can create a dynamic range using the index function. So in this example, I've got data validation based on a list called months list. So if I put in a new function right now, it, it goes down to June. If I put in a new month, so I've added July to this list, and now July is automatically added to my data validation dropdown. And to do that, I used the name manager, and here is my months list. I've used the formula that you can see listed on the worksheet. So starting in cell C1, I use the index function to go down that column, count the items that are in there, and that's how many rows we want. The final example is taking our list of months that we have in month order and putting them in alphabetical order. The index function finds the month name based on a row number. So the index is using C4, C9 as its reference, and the match function returns the row number for the next item in alphabetical order. And that is based on finding the smallest number and count if is checking how many items alphabetically come before each of the other items. The row just figures out which row we're currently on and then again we're checking how many items are in front of each other item. So to break it down a bit, if we look at the count if here, we can see that for January there would be two items ahead of it. February has one, April has zero, so it would be the first item. The row just figures out which row in this little list we're in right now. The small is finding the first smallest, which would be zero, and then the second smallest, so that's what the small does. And then match takes that zero and looks for it in this list and returns the number. So the zero is in the fourth position in that list. Finally, index goes through this list and returns the item that's in the fourth position.